Hello and welcome to the Tankspot Blackwing Descent Raid Guide. My name is Aliena and in this video I'll show you all you have to know about the Omnitron Defense System, the first boss in this new Cataclysm Raid instance. We completed this fight with 2 tanks, 7 healers and 16 DPS, although different compositions may work just as well. The Omnitron Defense System is a council type encounter that harbors 4 construct type enemies named Electron, Arcanotron, Magmatron and Toxitron. They have a shared health pool of approximately 100 million. You never fight all four constructs at the same time though. When you first engage the fight, you're faced with one random construct and you'll notice that it has an energy bar that's slowly draining. When its energy bar reaches 50, a second construct will become active. You'll see in advance which one it is since a colored beam will be energizing it. The color indicates the construct. Green for Toxitron, red for Magmatron, pink for Arcanotron, and blue for Electron. As soon as the second construct becomes active, the first construct will put up a shield, so DPS should always switch to the construct that last became active. As with the first, the second construct's energy bar will start ticking down, and when it reaches 50, the first construct will turn to stone, the second will put up a shield, and the third will be vulnerable to your attacks. This cycle keeps repeating throughout the fight until their shared health pool is depleted. The order of constructs is completely random, so you'll need to improvise a little on the get-go when you're faced with two heavy AoE constructs, for instance. I'll give you an overview of their abilities and then go over some basic strategies. Each construct has three major abilities. First up, Electron. His first ability, Lightning Conductor, puts a debuff on a random rate member. It's easily visible by the lightning animation flowing around the character. The debuffed rate member does not take damage himself, but deals major damage to anyone around him, so anyone affected by it needs to run out of the raid until Lightning Conductor wears off. Electrical Discharge is his second ability. It's a chain lightning thing that hits up to three people within eight yards of each other, so raid should attempt to spread out as much as possible when Electron is active. Unstable Shield is his third ability. When this is up, don't attack Electron since it will deal AoE damage to your raid. Unstable Shield lasts 10 seconds. Toxitron is a very poisonous foe that deals nature damage. His first ability, Poison Cloud, fires a missile at a random rate member and the area it hits will become engulfed in a poison cloud for a significant duration. Anyone standing in the area will take 50% more damage, which is bad for your raid members, but good when you can drag an active construct on top of it. His second ability, Poison Soaked Shell, puts a stacking dot on anyone attacking him. However, when you attack with the debuff on, you will deal 10,000 nature damage to your target. Do watch your stacks on this, there's a lot of other damage going out in this fight so you don't want to suddenly find yourself dead just cause you didn't watch your poison stacks. His third ability, Poison Protocol, summons a bunch of little poison bomb slime ads that'll each fixate on a raid member. Should they reach their target, they'll explode for about 100k AoE damage and leave a slime puddle on the ground. You really really want to avoid this. When Toxitron uses this ability, make sure to apply slows and stuns to the slimes and have anyone with a fixate debuff run away from their slime. Magmatron deals fire elemental damage. His first ability, Incineration Security Measure, is hard to miss since it shoots jets of flames throughout the entire room. You cannot dodge this, so just heal through it. This ability is annoying if you have Electron active at the same time, since both of them have AoE abilities. His second ability, Acquiring Target, deals very high single target damage to a random rate member. While he's preparing to cast it, a huge red beam will point to your rate member in question. When this happens, everyone in line of the beam, except the target, needs to move out of it to avoid taking damage. Also have your healers get ready to heal the targeted person, since they'll take lots and lots of damage. Any defensive cooldown is useful on the victim. His third ability is Barrier. When he puts this up, no one should attack Magmatron until it wears off, since breaking the shield will inflict 70k AoE damage to every raid member. It absorbs 450,000 damage, so don't panic when you see it cast, but do disengage immediately. The last construct, Arcanotron, deals arcane damage. Shocker, I know. His first ability, Power Generator, puts a blue puddle on the ground that'll give anyone standing in it a buff to damage and mana regeneration. That applies to him too, so make sure to pull him out of it and have your ranged rate members and healers stand in it while it's up. His second ability, Arcane Annihilator, is an interruptible spell that deals about 100k damage to a single rate member when cast. It's important to interrupt this whenever he casts it, since 100k can easily mean a death. Leave an interrupter on Arcanotron whenever he's active. His third ability, Power Conversion, makes Arcanotron stack a damage buff whenever he's attacked. Depending on your raid composition and mood, you can either stop attacking him while it's up, or have a major shaman spell steal or purge it. 
That covers all four constructs. It's important to mind your environment in this fight. When you have both Electron and Magmatron up, you should spread out and watch your health since it's likely to dip low. Make use of Arcanotron's power generator whenever you can. When you have both Magmatron and Toxitron active, make sure not to get hit by slimes although you might be distracted by Magmatron's abilities. Getting hit by a slime can easily mean a raid wipe. Make sure to communicate well on Vent and call out the various shields the constructs have. Breaking Magmatron's barrier is easily a right wipe too, and Electron's unstable shield is no joke either. Always be aware of which constructs are active, which one is about to go dormant and which one is soon to become active. Position yourself accordingly. The Arcanotron tank should save cooldowns in case power conversion stacks up high. That's about it for this council fight. I'm attaching a full raid encounter in case you're curious how we dealt with the various mechanics or just enjoy watching people do silly things occasionally. Since this is a council type encounter and they tend to be confusing, I figured this is a better way of presenting it and explaining its mechanics. I hope you enjoyed this guide and good luck on the fight.